So a new job field has been bursting onto the scene the past you know couple of years where everyone is heavily focusing on automation and trying to leverage as little manpower as they possibly can while also really scaling up their automation and their development capabilities between DevOps and security. DevOps and security are often seen as though they're on you know two different tracks. DevOps wants to push out uh, content to users and get everything hosted as fast as they can. Where security is seen more as something that's restrictive and is really trying to make the end user experience as secure as possible while also, you know, taking care of any liability on the actual company's end. But in the past couple of years, a job field has really opened up to try to marry the two together. And that field is DevSecOps. So in this video, I'm going to be telling you guys how to get a job in DevSecOps, what DevSecOps is, and what kind of skills you can bring to the table to actually apply and get one of these great salaries that we do see in DevSecOps today. So DevSecOps is a field where you not only have to have excellent security expertise, but you also have to be really knowledgeable in terms of configuring tooling, um, automation, development languages, and the whole DevOps flow that you're gonna be kind of slotting in and integrating into. And that's why it's one of the most well sought after jobs and highly paid jobs that you see today, um, speaking mainly from you know the US, but it's also a job that has a lot of ambiguity around it because people don't really understand and they're not really up to date with what a DevSecOps engineer does, and it seems extremely big. So as a DevSecOps engineer, you're gonna be brought into DevOps um, initiatives. So say DevOps wants to spin up a you know, code pipeline that automatically deploys from dev to test to prod, you're gonna be slotting into that process itself and offering high level security automation that can seamlessly slot into that process and, and not offer any overhead for a DevOps engineer but also take care of a lot of the security scanning of uh, static code analysis, of uh, basic uh, you know, scanning of environments, things like that. So it's just a sample exercise or a sample scenario that you might go through. Say DevOps is trying to make a you know, container shipping pipeline. And what that means is every single time someone pushes new code to master, uh, a new Docker container is spun up and that Docker container is actually sent to the dev environment. Hopefully you're not pushing directly to prod, but sent to the dev environment where it's going to be, you know, going through rigorous testing from DevOps to see the connectivity, how it interacts with the production environment, how it interacts with new code bases, things like that. As a DevSecOps engineer, you're going to be mainly focusing on doing the static scanning of that container. So what that would look like is when a container is pushed to a you know dev test environment you're going to actually be conducting analysis on that container before it gets pushed to prod so when you would go through you would go through and use scanning tools you would use things like veracode things that do static code analysis things that are testing you know, what ports are open on that Docker container, how that Docker container is configured. So you're gonna have to figure out a way to automate that process. Now, one way that I've done it in the past is I've used a Lambda that creates you know, and conducts basic analysis on the actual container living in that ECR or Elastic Container Repository. So the entire solution itself would be once you push that new code to master, a new Docker container spun up, that Docker container using you know something like GitHub Actions is pushed to ECR in your test environment in the cloud. Uh, again, come from a cloud background, so bear with me if you're on-prem. Um, and then once that happens, a Lambda will be triggered and it will go through and do basic testing and analysis, seeing what ports are open, how it's configured and things like that. From there, you might have another Lambda that then pulls in that container and offers you know, a little bit of feedback on what it saw. It, it, it parses out some data that you got from that Lambda and it's pushed back into that repository and on its way to prod. If it, if it passes or if it fails, it you know, denies the uh, pull request and it sends it back to the test environment with some certain parameters that you give it stating why it failed. Another way to do this would be to create a Lambda that does some basic static code analysis. So again, when that container comes into that repository, you're doing static code analysis on, on 
you know, are there any secrets out in that, uh, in that code? You're doing analysis of, is there any memory bugs or things like that? And you're automating that process where you can send it to, you know, prod with some basic notes, or you can send it back down to dev test and the people that created the container or the people that wrote the code have to then, you know, reconfigure everything based on the actual analysis and notes that you left them. Uh, some things I've actually done in the past, you can actually offer just a bit of basic vulnerability scanning based on those lambdas, or you can use things like AWS Detective that go in and kind of see uh, basic compliance issues that could be happening with that code base or with that container. So as you can see, you're slotting in, hopefully seamlessly, into that actual DevOps process or that DevOps flow, and that's where that DevSecOps part comes from. It. So you're actually creating as much tooling and as much you know infrastructure as these DevOps engineers, but you really have to be able to understand not only DevOps processes, but be at a high level technically where you're not going to slow down that process at all because the business is always going to be business minded. It's just how it is. So they're going to want product pushing out as fast as it possibly can. So you're going to have to create security checks that are going to go through and automate a lot of the security uh, back channeling that you would have had to have done before. And then you're going to have to fit in seamlessly. So product is still being pushed at a high rate, but it's a lot more secure than just say, basic DevOps processes that aren't really focusing on security, nor should they be. So just some basic things that I can help you guys on uh, grasp because I mean, DevSecOps is, is so broad and that was, you know, really a microcosm into what you'd be doing on a day to day basis. You could use things like I said, Lambda, you can use the Veracode API that's going to be doing static code analysis, showing you where those secrets are, uh, you know, where certain things shouldn't be exposed when they are uh, naming schemes, just basic things like that. And then you're gonna be using that Lambda with that API, which is a serverless function. I'll leave a link for a video where I create a serverless Lambda uh, right here, if you guys wanna look back over that. And all this is really gonna slot in in a programmatic way. You're not gonna be doing a lot of hands-on operational work. So a lot of the skills that you're gonna to need to be a successful DevOps engineer, I'm not gonna say the obvious one, which is understand a certain programming language. Personally, I would use Python if you're trying to slot in seamlessly in the cloud or, you know, Boto3 or Lambda environments. Node.js works as well, but I would, I would really recommend Python because you're going to be doing a lot of automation with certain code analysis APIs, certain Lambda functions that are, you know, using Boto3, which is a Python environment. I think the biggest skill that you need to have to get a job in DevSecOps is the ability to learn and be confident in knowing how to figure things out that you may not know right off the bat. So if you're one of those people that really feels confident in saying, yeah, I can figure that out, then DevSecOps would be actually the job for you. DevOps engineers come with a lot of knowledge for the most part, and their job is heavily, heavily scrutinized because if there's connectivity issues, if there's uptime issues, they're gonna be the ones that are gonna have the finger pointed at them. So they're gonna point the finger at you if it's one of your security tools that is malfunctioning and really hindering the process of DevSecOps or DevOps in general. So if you're one of those people that really feels comfortable where you don't know a solution, but you're very confident in your ability to figure it out, DevSecOps is gonna be a perfect place for you to thrive. It's gonna be a lot of fun and exciting work that you haven't done in the past, but it's also gonna come with a lot of scrutiny in terms of connectivity because no longer are you going to be someone in security that's kind of on the sidelines when a connectivity or an uptime issue happens, you're gonna be slotted in seamlessly with the DevOps process. Therefore, you're going to have to help when you have those outages and you're gonna have to help put out those fires. Now, some basic resources that you guys could get up to date on before you try to hop into a DevSecOps environment or DevSecOps capacity is number one, Lambda. You're gonna to have to focus on serverless functions, whether it's in AWS or Azure. Azure has their own version of Lambda. It's all the same. It's just a serverless application that you can provide you know, environment variables, runtime parameters, and it's gonna run on almost a self-imposed cron job. So it's gonna run at certain times based on certain events that may happen in the environment. For example, if a DevOps engineer, like I said, pushes a new Docker container to master, or sorry, if a DevOps engineer pushes new code to master and that GitHub action runs and it spins up a Docker container, that Docker container is gonna be pushed immediately to say something like ECR or whatever service you're using, it's gonna be a container repository. And your Lambda is gonna be triggered on that event. So when that ECR container comes into ECR, it's going to actually trigger some event context that gets sent to a Lambda that then runs your function. So every single time, 
one of those uh, containers is pushed there, you could run some static code analysis using the Veracode API, using the Bodo 3 API, and, and anything you want to get data to give back to the DevOps engineers or the developers in an automated way. So ECR is also gonna be a huge one. Understanding any sort of container repository and basic API functions that go along with that is gonna be a huge leg up on the competition, and it's gonna help you slot in seamlessly with DevOps engineers. Now, another service that's gonna be really, really helpful for you guys to succeed as DevOps, uh, DevSecOps engineers is gonna be understanding Docker and how to run Docker Compose files. Now, Docker is a nightmare when you first start off with it, but it's actually not as hard once you start to understand the basic processes behind it. Docker is gonna be you know, mainly on the DevOps side, but if you can understand what a container is doing, what packages it's installing, how it's being configured, you can understand how to give feedback to those DevOps engineers or those developers on how to better harden their Docker containers. Another great so like, skill that you could have is just understanding APIs and automation. Like I said in the beginning, you're gonna be doing a lot of API automation here, whether it's the AWS API, Docker APIs, uh, Terraform APIs, uh, Veracode APIs, all those things are going to work congruently and help you better understand your job and better assist DevOps in becoming a seamless part of their team. Now, I know that was a lot of basic functionality and you know I offered some basic solutions in the beginning. I'll leave some documentation in the description below of how to actually run those solutions and what resources you'll actually need to enable those solutions. But if DevSecOps actually piqued your interest, I highly recommend you guys looking at job requirements in your area to see kind of how you would slot into that flow and what kind of skills you could work on having in order to get a job there. Again, you'll be rewarded handsomely for that, for that position and it's really on the verge of breaking into almost all organizations. I see it a lot of times in startups now because they wanna move with such agility and also sometimes they don't wanna pay the actual manpower hours that it would take to do certain things. But that's also going to enable you guys, if you really love technical uh, prowess, if you really love automation, to actually enhance your skills and do some really cool projects on the side. So if you guys like this video, I appreciate you guys always for watching. Definitely give the video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Follow me on my social medias in the description below and keep up to date with content that's coming out. And I will see you guys in the next video.